We've seen a video, live of a woman being strangled. And there are people contemplating the fact of whether it was justified to strangle her or not. Is, is this a talking point? My baby looking too good, yeah, she perfect. No, she worth it. When she pull up, all the man them flirting. And yeah, she know that she a dime. Call up on my line. Told her, baby, bring it one time. Yeah. Girl, sit down and relax. Girl, let me put it on you, no time for chit chat. Because she moved like a queen and I like what I... Okay, am I comfy? Yeah, I'm comfy. Cool. Yo, what's really good though? It's your girl, yes, yes, sir. You're locked in for another episode of Hey Sis. I told you from time to time, AY won't always be here, but she's always here, if that makes sense. But sometimes when things are on my chest, I just got to say it, man. This week as a whole, oh, let me be professional, man. <laughs> First and foremost, have you been locked into our Spotify? We're exclusively on Spotify when it comes to audios. So if you wanted to go and follow us, you probably should because I'm expecting you're some sort of a support in some kind of capacity. We are also on the road to 1,000 subscribers over on our YouTube. Once we get to 1,000 subscribers, we'll be able to up our game when it comes to the type of content we bring you, what we can do, even outside of the whole camera, if that makes sense. I will be able to do stuff in our real life. If you get, you get. If you don't, then maybe you should subscribe so you can understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers on our Instagram page. And I've got to say, man, you guys have been going crazy. We are now at 4,000 plus followers. 10K is the goal. So let's get into it. First and foremost, let me go ahead and sip my cup because, boy, this week has been huge. One thing I can say about this week is that London is a mad place. It's a mad place. It's in dire straits simply because a lot's been going on. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, we have had two things that have made me shake my head in shame. One of them being the incident that happened in the Peckham hair shop where a, hold on, it's the fiance calling me. Hey, babe, I'm literally recording this episode. I'm in the mix. Okay. Where you at? Uh, just All right, then. Um, I will talk to you soon. Okay. All right, we'll do. Okay, bye. Love you. So, yeah, two things have happened this week. One of them being the incident in Peckham in a hair shop. Let me just paint the scene for you guys in case you didn't know what's going on. So a young black woman, relatively young. Let me say she looks in her mid-30s, yeah? She buys some hair. I think it's a pack of expressions. Something's wrong with it. It's booked. It, it ain't what it's supposed to be. And as you can imagine, if you walk into a hair shop and you ask for a refund or an exchange, they're going to give it to you. However, it's now come out that this particular hair shop, the owners have been getting away with not giving refunds. Like they'll literally put up this policy of no refunds and the people of Peckham been allowing it. Where I'm from, <laughs> that would not run, I tell you for sure. But apparently it's been going on for a while. This particular woman was like, uh-uh, I will get the hair I want. I'll get my money's worth. I'll get a refund. In the words of Denzel, I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> and that's what she did. She decided to get, for example, let's just say she got two packs of expressions. She went and got a fresh pack of expressions, proceeded to leave the hair shop. And this guy looked like a freaking wrestler, fam. He started dragging her up. At some point, he even choked her. Before you come from my neck and say, Yezzy, you're not saying the full facts. She did take a plastic shopping basket and slam it over his head. But at this point, he was already gripsing her up. I don't blame her. That's when he actually strangled her. The reason why I'm sick of the internet and I'm sick of our community, is that we've seen a video, live of a woman being strangled, and there are people contemplating the fact of whether it was justified to strangle her or not. Is, is this a talking point? Are we really discussing whether or not it was justified to choke a woman when you are built like a freaking WWE wrestler? I don't care if she was shoplifting. Where is it that you get to strangle somebody? You're an owner, you're a shop owner, you're a business owner. If things go wrong, you try to resolve the situation. That should be your first point of call. 
okay, you've come back, you're not happy with what uh, you've purchased. How do we resolve this? Is it in the form of a refund, an exchange, a voucher? So you can come back and get something else. Your hand should not be on anybody. Even if you got a SIA license, it will say, oh yeah, reasonable force. The police themselves have guidelines that they abide to of what is deemed as reasonable force. But you, an average Joe, regular degular shop owner, putting your hands around another human being's neck in Peckham, I'm surprised she ain't got people to ride out for her. I'm surprised that we are still in a day and age where we think protesting is going to do something. Hello, wake up to my people. I'm going to say this very plain and simple. I don't think we can afford to do any more protests. That's a form of polite responses to situations. If you think that, oh, yeah, you know, to be fair, in this situation, it's a case by case. She was strangled, but she was trying to leave with the items because of a pack, couple packs of expressions. Really? We getting strangled up in these streets for, for items that probably didn't come up to 20 pounds? Is, is that what's happening? And we do in a young protest. Mm -mm. It needs to be this. And I've been saying this for years. We've got to circulate money within our community. If you don't know what it is, do your Googles, man. Do your research. We've got to keep the pound within our community if your community is black if your community is white if your community is working class middle class i don't care but you gotta keep your money with the people that respect you if i go in a shop and someone's following me i'm gonna stand still and say for you to follow me that's an indication that you think i'm gonna steal if you feel like i'm the type of person based on my demeanor or skin color to steal from <laughs> the likes of your shop then i'll leave because that's already a disrespect number one we need to come together and really say, nah, it's getting too much now. The protest was light work. For me, what is effective is if this particular individual were to apologize, and even better for me, satisfaction-wise, is the shop to close down. People are going to tell me, Yezzy, you don't know the facts of the situation. I'm going to echo it again. Nothing as a business owner justifies you putting your hands on anybody and strangling at that. We do in a protest in response to strangling. Wasn't it the young black girl that was in a school before that was getting rushed by a, a bunch of other white girls? About six of them in total. I think they were from the traveler community. Yeah, we did another protest. We keep protesting and nothing's changing. And you know what's so funny? And I have to laugh because as the saying goes, if you don't laugh, you cry. <laughs> we keep protesting and nothing's changing so don't we think it's time to do a little different kind of protest than just protesting hey stop doing this we do a few chants we go live on tiktok the disrespect continues we are protesting for respect in a big 2023 we should be protesting for economical powers and shares into uh, situations and conglomerates anything that we're supposed to gain power in or that we don't we want space in okay in regards to media and sporting and entertainment in the medical field in education we're protesting for respect we're protesting please don't put your hands on me <laughs> can you imagine i must have gone onto instagram the other day saw a live where i saw a black man say that oh you know what I don't really agree with the whole strangulation thing. I think it was justified. Sometimes you have to only look onto yourself if you want justice. You can't say, oh, this person's going to look after me or this community is something I can rely on. We just need to be amongst people that are like-minded, evenly yoked. That's the grassroots of it all. <laughs> it, it, it hurts because every time I go into WhatsApp or Instagram or Snapchat, I just see videos all day long of women that look just like me getting treated like animals in the street. And then what do we say? Oh, guys, I know what we can do. Let's put on a protest. Cut the protest out. I'm tired of it. We need to have connections if it comes to uh, when it comes to legislation. Where are our friends in the council? Where are our friends in parliament? Where are our friends in law enforcement? in the judicial system not us couple locals coming together and doing a protest we gotta we gotta take it up a notch it ain't enough 
couple of days even what after that or in the midst of it we got a young sister going on instagram no tiktok live talking about how this is why i said this week has been a whole mess man honestly i'm trying to deliver it to you in a calm manner we got another sister coming on tiktok live talking about you need to get uh, yourself a good time and the only way you can have a good time is if you go to Hyatt. Hyatt Lounge, the uncles are there. They're buying you drinks and buying you food. I'm so glad we, uh, not me in particular, I probably am right now anyway, but a bunch of people are saying, this ain't it, sis. This ain't it. Our expectations are our all-time low, you know. Society's expectation of the black woman is at an all-time low because we can see it evidently with how we're treated. <laughs> and... Our expectations, let's just say young women, is at an all-time low. We getting excited about drinks and food. To be honest, if you're at Hyatt Lounge, we're talking appetizers. We getting excited over appetizers and drinks. Oh, no, we got to do better. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got to do so much better. And I want to say, oh, you know what? Let me blame it on the youth. Like, oh, you know, when you're young, there's things you're going to be excited about. And when you come of age, it won't be as exciting. But it's getting older and older. 21, ooh, 23, 24, 25, ooh, 30. We still bragging about drinks and appetizers at the club. This has got to be a situation with earning power. Obviously, I know that we've come out of a two-year lockdown we are going through a cost of living crisis the job market isn't what it used to be unemployment is at an all-time high yeah even though we are in a nanny state here we are we're going out on the weekend probably not a penny in our purse hoping for somebody old enough to be our father to buy us drinks and appetizers to then go home talk about on instagram or tiktok live as a way of bragging about my beauty beauty fades i think the thing that we need to learn as women is that as soon as we comprehend that beauty is here for a period of time and sometimes that window is shorter than we ever expected we can start focusing on things that actually matter in life like your intelligence get your knowledge up find the right people when it comes to friends and romantically inclined partners live life What's, what's beauty? Beauty is a, sand, a standard anyway, a social construct. No, if we if we really want to get into it, beauty as we know it today is a social construct that has been created through the gaze of a man. And then every day you try to live up to the expectation of a man that you've probably never even met. As in your face has to be this shape and you have to be this size and your nose and your eye color and your lips and nah, 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 nah. We've seen what's been happening since the 80s up until now. One minute you have to have a figure of a model, catwalk model that is. Next it's the pace three girls. Then it's about your breast. Then it's about your bum. Then it's about your tummy. We've got people dying getting BBLs. Young girls are saving up money that they've worked hard for. Still in the same council estate. And I'm not trying to get onto anybody living in the council estate. I once lived in the council estate. Young girls are dying, going abroad, getting eye colour surgery. What eye colour were they changing it to? Grey. Why the hell you need grey eyes? They tried to get blue. Blue wasn't available. They said they got grey. The girl went blind. After going blind, she died. What's going on? Where does it happen where we are lacking in so much confidence as women? It's like... I'm so sorry to say this, but as women, it's like confidence is on an all-time low. Every other week, you've got people flying out to the DR, to Turkey, everything, getting their bum done. If it's not their bum, it's their breasts. If it's not their breasts, they're bleaching. If they're not bleaching, they're getting their lips done. If they're not getting their lips done, they're getting their nose done. Oh, my God. What happened to the home base that we're all coming from? Whether it's a two-parent household, one-parent household... Did anybody not tell any of the young women now that you are beautiful, you are enough, you are complete, you are one of a kind? I think that's why we need all these positive affirmation pages, man. Every day there's a different quote page just trying to feed life into people. I don't think we're speaking life into women anymore. 
I know they said, oh, and they say chivalry is dead, but there was a time that a man could give you a compliment without wanting to go any further with you. If a man sees you dressed well, smelling nice, opens the door for you and says, oh, you're looking lovely today. Have a nice day. That's it. Now we're on the defense. And I get it. When you're coming from an inner city area, London, South London, North London, West London, I'm not going to go into specifics because the last time I talk, I spoke about a specific area, everyone tried to act like I was ignorant to the world. But then, then again, I don't give a damn what people think, so I'm going to say it. When you're coming from an inner city like South East London, as a woman, yes, you're going to have your defence up because you don't know what someone's approaching you for. You would like to think if someone approaches you, they're asking for directions or they're lost or they want to know anything but it's very hard to come across somebody that's simply paying someone a compliment so if you're not coming out of your house and you're low on confidence you're inside your house on social media feeling more inferior because you're seeing everybody with the tummy tucks and the bbls or i don't even know what they're calling it nowadays (laughs) or skinny bbl i've heard one time it's ridiculous and then everyone's got their own sob story as to why they're getting it. And, and I hear it. Sometimes you need it. You need the confidence boost. You need something. But at the end of the day, when you look in the mirror and you go home, it's really, and I, know, I hate to sound so generic, yeah, but you got to love you. <laughs> you have to love you. If, no, if you don't love you, how can anybody love you? And yeah, you got the, the love of a parent. That's all nice and that's sweet. Da, 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 da. When they leave this world, there's a different type of love that you get from your parents, a love you receive from your child and a love that you get from a partner. Nothing's more attractive than how much you love yourself. Let's not act like you've never been gravitated towards someone based off their confidence alone. It's something so powerful. And at the same time, it's like, I don't even want to use the word intoxicating, but it's like a a good intoxication when someone's so confident that their confidence even seeps into you. People pour into people every day, but sometimes confident people don't know that they are pouring into each other. Iron sharpens iron, and it's so true. If you are coming from a household, one parent, two parent, it could be your grandmother or your grandpa raising you. When you have someone from when you're yay high up into adult age speaking life into you, saying that you are intelligent, you can fulfill everything you can, no dream or aspiration is too small for you, nine times out of ten, you're going to be a very confident and driven individual because from your home base, you've been told that you're an incredible being. That's why I say certain professions you get into, yeah, you have to be careful. When you're a teacher, primary school teacher, secondary school teacher, lecturer at university, I personally think teachers deserve more because those are one of the most important roles in society ever. Because the same time a parent's feeding into you, your child's in school, God knows how many hours a week, Monday to Friday, you might have after school clubs or an extra tutor on the weekend. That person they're with should also be speaking life into them. I remember having a teacher telling me, you're going to do incredible things. I can feel it. I can tell. And when you do, give me a shout out. It still rings in my head right now. But what happens is now, you haven't got your household being the only one that speaks life over you. It's not just school. Yeah, you might come across a few school billy, um, school bullies from time to time. But before, and way before my time, the only person that could probably knock your confidence is a school bully you stand up to them it pretty much squashes it depending on how in-depth the bullying is but the new bully is social media the new bully is people telling you you need something that you don't need you've got influencers who are very confident in what they do Um, they might not generically and socially be deemed as the it girls where you've got clinics in turkey dming them saying hey do you want to fix your teeth do you want to get a tummy tuck do you want all these things nah no 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 liposuction used to be a surgery that was needed as a very last result if you are morbidly obese 
now people are getting liposuction just so they can look good in a bikini. I think we're forgetting that these surgeries, you can die on the surgery table. You can die from them, as in never come back again. I don't know if you think you're Lazarus or you think you are Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not everybody comes back from the dead. But people are booking trips to the DR, the Dominican Republic that is, they are booking trips to Turkey. Like they got the cat of nine lives. <laughs> nah, I need to say that again. I need to say that again <laughs> because I'm actually getting peed off. <laughs> Let me take a sip. People are out here booking trips to the DR, booking trips to Turkey. Like they got nine lives. Like they're a cat. These surgeries are they tell you from the jump that you could potentially die from it and people are just ticking away at the waivers all right cool no problem sign me up and for what how long are you looking to be in a bikini for for i don't know another 15 years if that not everybody can be a shanty i'm just gonna put that out there not everybody can pull off a bikini like a shanty and some of you lot ain't even hitting the beach like that you just getting it to look like the Fashion Nova models. And I used to let it get to me. I used to be annoyed when the clothes on the Fashion Nova models didn't look like me. Then I had to realise that even the Fashion Nova models don't look like the Fashion Nova models. No shade, no shade. But I'm saying, not only are they surgically enhanced bodies, they also got the clips at the back. So in case you've been living under a rock... The clothes we see on any platform, it can be Fashion Nova, it can be PLT, it can be Sheetin. I don't care how you pronounce it, yeah? They do not look like that. So they will not look like that on you. And if the clothes that you just saw that you fell in love with online don't look the way you thought they would, it's fine. That's how they're supposed to look on you. You just work it the best way you know how. I'm, I'm sick of this. Honestly, we should celebrate different shapes sizes complexions all at the same time this whole thing of oh this is the style and the look and the aesthetic for this time being is what we're sticking to and if we want it to come back we'll let it come back Uh, -uh. you're not gonna do me like y2k fashion for the longest we knew clothes and the way things were styled in the early 2000s what was it was decent okay it was high in my opinion and then someone comes along and goes yeah it's not in then what happens lo and behold we in a big 2023 and now y2k's back and imagine some of you okay you know who you are you kept some of those items from the early two fashion <laughs> the early 2000s yeah you kept it and because somebody else said y2k is back oh yes yes y2k is now back you've brought out the wardrobe now it's cool to wear that's why I'm in my I don't give a heck era. I'm in my I don't give a damn. I'm unapologetically going to do whatever I want to do. I'm not going to be that beg that said, oh, I'm going to go ag against the grade because it's cool to go against the grade and I want to be different. Mm -mm. It's not that I want to be different by fire by force type thing. No, this is if I want to wear this, I'm going to wear this. I'm not waiting, waiting for any magazine, uh, any person that's the spokesperson of fashion to tell me this is what we're wearing in fall and this is where we're wearing in winter maybe because i'm from southeast london nobody's telling me nothing about this is where i wear then this is the size that's in now uh, marilyn monroe is now the stencil this person's now the stencil i'm the stencil now what that's how i want to rock it fight me that's it but we're getting so caught up everybody want a van cleef bracelet everybody want a van cleef bracelet you don't want a four leaf cover bracelet <laughs> yo i'm getting irate let me sip my water <laughs> stop the cap stop the cap everybody want a van van what the hell you call it van cleef Everybody want a Van Cleef bracelet. You don't want a four-leaf clover on your damn wrist. You don't. You just want the freaking four-leaf clover because your favourite influencer has got it on their wrist. You couldn't give a toss. Now everybody want the Van Cleef clover. 
I want some Prada sunglasses because she's wearing Prada sunglasses. If you got the Primark sunglasses, you wear your Primark sunglasses, fam. You know you don't want those sunglasses anyway because you break them half the time. But if you got Prada sunglasses money, you go and wear it. What do I know? Okay, this uh, this purchases I've made because I generally want to make them. Another person's impression might be that I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses. Well, guess what? I couldn't keep up with them even if I wanted to. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned about adulting, yeah, as I've got older, there is nothing wrong with staying in your lane. Oh, it's a comfortable place, you know. If someone were to tell me, yo, stay in your lane, I'd say, fine by me. Because I couldn't afford to be in anyone else's lane but my own. Honestly, this life here will try and attack you. Whether it's spiritually, physically, mentally, every tally you can imagine. But when you really look at it, half the time we're just fighting with ourselves. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to fight with myself. That's going to be one heck of a battle. Me against me? Oh, I can see it now. <laughs> in lights. All I'm saying is that we're living in a time that's difficult enough as it is. Don't start aspiring to be the girls at the Hyatt Lounge. We don't know what they're doing to get the suya and the cocktails. Especially rubbing up against people old enough to be a dad. I would never understand that. And at the same time, we should just be happy with who we are. But this week in the UK, London to be specific, has been a mad one. So these are my roundups. These are my final takeaways for today. Takeaway number one. I'm tired of the protests. Cut the damn protests. We don't need another protest. I'm sick of them. They ain't helping. We ain't getting treated any better in society. So I think it's time we regroup, guys. I don't know who we're speaking to, who's in charge of the whole thing. But I don't want to see another protest. Cut it. Number two. The Hyatt Lounge girls, I do hope and pray for them that they do realise that uh, beauty is fleeting and there will come a time that there ain't nothing sweeter than being able to provide for yourself. Getting money from your partner or whoever you get money from is a bonus, but it's sweet where you can just get it for yourself. You don't have to ask for anyone's credit card. You don't need to call anyone for a transfer. You see that bag, you cop that bag. Now that is the real power. And my third point in regards to being happy and staying in your lane, there are a lot of negative connotations in society about when you stay in your lane, it's someone trying to marginalize you or box you in and you can do so much more. And yes, when it comes to aiming high, why not shoot for the stars? You might land in the clouds, as they say. But it is okay to stay in your lane. When I go through my local market and I see the man on the fruit store saying two pound a pound bananas, da, 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 selling everything, and it was passed down to him by his father and his father did the same thing, selling fruit on a Sunday morning, pound a bowl, he's content, he's happy. Do you know what it is to be content? Shout out to everybody out there that's content because I know you sleep well at night. Being content, your heart is at ease, your mind is at ease, you're happy, and you look forward to a new day. That is what we should all aspire to. I'm not saying you should go and get yourself a fruit stall, but if you've got a fruit stall and you are genuinely happy with it, be content. If you're wearing Nikes, Nikes, whatever you want to call it, and the next man's got Balenciaga, but you genuinely like your 90s, 90s, your Nikes, be content. If you got braids in and the next person got a front lace 4x4, four four, this density, da 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 da, 30 inches to the floor, fume fume sweeping. Braids in and another person's got a 4x4 four four front lace, 30 inches sweeping to the ground, but you genuinely like braids, rock your poetic justice braids fam with chest i hope that towards the end of this episode it brought some clarity to you if you were having any self-doubts about yourself it just you know helped you a little bit i think we could all do with a little bit of help because it got to a point that i was getting sucked into so much foolery so much content that i was taking in i was like hold on mm -mm. i can't be in this world like that mm -mm. 
Mm. It's getting a bit too much. Sometimes you got to draw back, have a little cleanse, watch good stuff. Like, hey, sis. <laughs> and remember to subscribe to the Spotify. If you haven't yet, do that. If you know anyone that you think would like similar content like this, send it to them. Doesn't hurt. Mum, dad, sister, uncle, brother, your pet hamster. <laughs> and uh, remember, we are hitting 10K on our Instagram, which is heysis underscore UK. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube, which is Yezzy is uh, official. And on Spotify, you can find us under heysis UK. Our logo is the lips with a bit of pink. Until then, man, stay blessed. I hope to look back on these episodes and be like, rah, we were only asking for 10K back then. We at one milli now. <laughs> Have a good one. Morning, afternoon, evening, whatever. Enjoy it. Because she moved like a queen and I like what I see and I want to get more of that. Uh, I address any blow success. Lay down as you decompress. Come mind and forget the stress. But the nine to five because he trying to change his life. He can't help it but to show his bad side. So he call me Jesse when he want that good ride. Follow my stride. You know you want a good time. Pick any card. I know it won't decline. He know how to please.